Hi, this is Eric Reed. I'm Kayla Stephan. Both of us are jazz pianists, and we, I'm going to interview Eric Reed right now. So my first question is, what inspired you to continue playing jazz from young to until now? I don't know. I just started playing the piano when I was about two or three years old, and I had an aunt and uncle that gave me some jazz records of uh, Horace Silver, Ramsey Lewis, and Dave Rubeck. And when I put that on the record player, you know the record player is? Yes. Oh, okay, just check, because you're kind of young. Uh, I put it on the record player, and when I heard it, that's immediately what I wanted to do. So I tried to play everything that I heard, and I hadn't heard it live until I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even know that these guys were still alive. Some of them were dead, like Clifford Brown, Charlie Parker, by the time you know I was born. But I didn't know that Art Blakey and Dave Brubeck and a lot of guys were still alive. So I was hoping maybe one day, I don't know, I'd meet somebody else who was playing this music and I could play it with them because I could hear they were playing with horn players and drummers and bass players. But I was just playing piano by myself and mostly playing in church. And they weren't playing jazz. It was a no-no. <laughs> um, my second question is, what do you consider yourself your greatest, most memorable moment of your career? Hmm. Uh, I've had quite a few amazing opportunities on the bandstand. I've worked with a lot of different jazz musicians. I'm a lot older than you are. But uh, I remember when I got a chance to sit in with Art Blakey, one of the guys that I heard when I was young. So that was a tremendous experience. And uh, I got a chance to play John Lewis's music. John Lewis played piano with the Modern Jazz Quartet. And I got a chance to play his music with him conducting with a big band. And I used to go over to his house and we used to play duets. Um, I, used to, I played Wayne Shorter. That was pretty memorable too, Freddie Hubbard. A lot of the guys that I grew up listening to on records, again, I didn't know I was ever going to meet them. And I wound up playing in their bands 20 years later. So I've had uh, several really amazing moments. And then I've got my own bands that I've worked with. I work with a lot of young musicians. So uh, I'm always inspired by them. And then, of course, getting to talk to young people who are also interested in the music. So this is a very inspirational moment as well. I'll remember this. Um, if you had to give any advice to young pianists like myself, what would it be? Smile. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's important to listen to the music. Um, a lot of times I talk to young musicians about the jazz records that they have in their collection. And most of them can't really tell me that they have more than 10 jazz recordings because they listen to everything else. So I bump into a lot of young jazz. You're, you're how old are you? You're 13. You're 13. Oh, very young. I bump into a lot of young jazz musicians who um, they aspire to be players, but they don't really listen to the music. And I look at their, I said, look in your iPod. So I look at their iPod and I scroll through and they have everything but jazz. And I'm thinking to myself, well, how will you ever learn how to play the music if you don't listen to it? So I guess that's the best piece of advice I can give to young jazz musicians is to listen to the music. What inspired you to play piano? I was born with that gift. When I was in my mommy's belly, God said, Phew. and that's what happened. That's the truth. That's the truth. That's the truth. Um, what, when did you consider yourself to be a professional pianist? The minute I got a paycheck. The minute, the minute I got a paycheck. Actually, um, my mother, when, when I was playing, I would play at these different churches around Philadelphia. I was born in Philadelphia. And I would play uh, on their evening programs. And my father also sang gospel music with the quartets. And so sometimes he had me play with him, or I'd play for all these different singers. I was the house pianist for some of these concerts. And at the end of the evening, you know, they'd take up an offering, they'd pass the basket around, you know, or people would walk up and put money in the basket. And part of that offering, somebody at the church, the pastor or, the, you know, whoever, would always want to 
put something in an envelope and give it to me. And my mother would snatch the envelope and say, no. I was like, this, this lost her mind, you crazy? This just gotta give me some money here. I mean, it'd be like $100 in there sometimes. You know, $100 in 1975 was a lot of money. But um, she was thinking far ahead as mothers do, as fathers and what they think, they're thinking for us. And she knew that the minute I started accepting money, it was gonna be a conflict for me with regard to trying to compete in amateur competitions and things like that. So, because it would mean I was a professional. So the minute you start accepting money for your services, you're a professional. Okay, and my last question is, are there any regrets you have pursuing jazz or becoming a pianist? <laughs> yeah. Not so much regrets, mm -hmm. but just things that I wish I could have done differently. I don't regret, I don't regret the decisions that I made, but I still wish I'd made different ones. Does that make any sense? Yeah. So it's not so much a regret as much as it's like, eh, that could have gone differently, that kind of thing. Because I'm pretty comfortable where I am. You know, I work playing the music that I love to play, I get to travel all over the world, and I get to meet and talk to people who ask me very interesting questions. Um, but, uh, you know, it's not always, things don't always work out the way you planned. And it doesn't mean it fails. It just means that there's a different path than perhaps the one that you had set out on, you know? So I had all my goals and everything was in line. I was like, okay, I was moving that way. And then things just changed because just because you're going in one direction doesn't mean that everybody else is kind of, you know, gonna be going in that direction with you. Cause you know, you're not on the path by yourself. You know, you need people's help. You still need your parents' help. You need, you know, musicians to hire you and to validate you and listen to you and uh, uh, critique you things like that. So it's good to have some direction, but you have to also be open to the possibilities of where you might wind up going. You know, because even though you're headed that way, you might wind up taking a sharp left, you know, but still stay on some type of continuous path. Did I answer your question? Yes. Can I answer several questions? Okay. Well, those are all the questions I have for you today. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Who are your favorite piano players? Favorite piano player is Bud Powell. Whoa, is that right? Yes. You know any Bud Powell songs? Yes, I know Bootleg Blues. I know, don't really know the names, but I know his album, his record for when he went to Paris. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. In the 1960s, yes. 1950s actually. Okay. And how long have you been playing piano? I've been playing piano three years, going on four. Okay. You ever play classical music? No. Nope. I'll play one classical, one classical song. Okay, but mostly jazz. Yes. Do you like any pop music? Yes. That's okay. No, don't be ashamed of that. You like Adele? Oh, I love Adele. Of course you do. You like Alicia Keys? Okay. I love her. Okay. All right. Okay. Do you have any jazz on your iPod? Yes. Okay. I have this jazz. Um, jazz with the time. Okay. And what else? What about? Do you have a little power? Our table? Yes. Yeah, this is the That's going to blow your mind. He was phenomenal. Blind. Blind? Yeah. You won't believe it when you hear it. You're going to think it's four piano players. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure meeting you. Too.